Hello, my name is Case, and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. This one is just a quick add on video to my series of 3D light tutorials because, in my previous tutorial on 3D light shaders, I had mentioned that 3D light does not yet offer a curvature node as part of its toolset for Houdini. Hopefully, that will be coming soon. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you guys a simple workaround that allows you to get curvature on your 3D light shaders, even though, as I mentioned, we don't yet have a specialized curvature node. So let me show you how. Here we are in Houdini and this is what we're going for. So basically a curvature map allows us to get some of this really nice edge detail on our models so that we can do some of this uh, kind of wear and tear sort of look that matches you know the real world counterparts. Uh, you know it's as if like some of the paint has maybe rubbed off or chipped off the edges right here. So uh, let me show you how I went about achieving this look in 3D Light, even though we don't have a curvature map node in 3D Light. So I'm gonna get this guy out of the way. And here is my model. This is just like a basic uh, kind of sci-fi looking gizmo from uh, I think Video Copilot. So the magic that allows us to get some curvature information onto our model and into 3D Light is actually this node right here the measure curvature node. And this node is uh, part of the Side Effects Labs toolkit. So once again, Side Effects Labs to the rescue. And what this node does is it looks at our geometry. I'm assuming it probably like analyzes the direction of the normals and then extrapolates where our edges are. And uh, right now I have this wrench scale really exaggerated just to show you guys what is actually happening. But basically, our convex edges are getting this uh, green sort of coloration, and our concave are getting the red coloration, okay? So this is basically what this node is giving us as far as information is concerned. Now, the thing that I should mention is that uh, the measure curvature node works better if you have a lot of polygons in your geometry. So what I did right here is before hitting the measure curvature node I added a subdivide node to give us a little bit more detail in our geometry so I think I have uh, two levels of depth and then I added a creased level of uh, two just to kind of retain our nice clean edges in our model. However, there is a problem that at least I've noticed, at least on this particular model, which is that by using a subdivide node and the measure curvature node as well, I get like a little bit of these kind of weird looking artifacts in my normals when I go to render. So what I prefer to do is actually render directly from my original geometry and bypass these two nodes as I go into my render engine. However, I do want to retain two very important attributes from here, the concavity and the convexity point attribute, okay? These two attributes is what allows us to bring this information into 3D Light. So the way I'm doing this is with a simple attribute transfer node, concavity and convexity right here. So I'm basically copying these two attributes from this measure curvature node into my original geometry and then sending that downstream to a UV auto seam, a UV flatten to get me some basic usable UVs and last but not least a null out node. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go into our material and see a little bit what it is going on on that side of the equation. So what I have here is a 3D light attribute read. And in this particular case, the attribute read is reading the concavity attribute. Remember, this was created by our measure curvature. Concavity in this particular case is what I want to be using. So I'm bringing this attribute directly into 3D light just by saying that I want to use concavity. Uh, then what I have is a remap node just so that I can kind of adjust because I really want to compress this particular information so that I can get like some really, really strong maps on our edges right here. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm just going to plug this guy into the color and I'm going to plug this into the surface and I'm going to hit render. Let me bring the IPR back in so you can kind of see this is the information that 
is being plugged into 3D Light from our concavity attribute that I'm using. Now the problem with this is that it's fairly clean, right? I mean, it's it's very exact and very precise and like wear and tear usually does not happen uniformly on the edges like this. So what I need to do is I need to be able to break it up a little bit. And the way that I'm doing that, here, let me get this out of the way once more, is I'm using a solid fractal noise no node. So let's see what this guy looks like. So now I need to combine this with this so that I can break up some of these edges and make them ultimately look like this. And what I'm doing is I'm using a float blend node that is set to multiply. So basically these two values are being multiplied. Let me show you what the composite of both of these two nodes mean multiplied together looks like. I'm gonna hit render right here and show you. So basically what we're getting is a little bit more noise and a little bit more kind of uh, non-uniform sort of breakup in our edges which is exactly what I want, okay? I want this not to look very precise. So last but not least, I have a remap node uh, just to kind of fine tune the effect. Last but not least, I have a very simple metal uh, shader to give us the kind of underneath metal material. And then I have a principal node that is basically set to this orange kind of paint sort of look. So I'm gonna plug this guy back in, I'm gonna fire up my IPR and I'm gonna set it to IPR mode like so and right now it looks dark actually because we're still plugging my uh, maps, my mask into my principal which I don't want because it's overriding the texture uh, which is just like this orange paint. So basically this remap node allows me to fine tune the level wear and tear by adjusting these two settings right here. So for instance, if I kind of send this a little bit further back, then we have a bit of a smoother roll off of our mask and we have a little bit more kind of blurriness and fadiness to our mask. It's not quite as pronounced, um, but it also kind of gets weaker, okay? Because basically we're introducing a lot more grayscale values as opposed to compressing our zero to one values in a much tighter space. So if I push it the other way, we're gonna start getting a lot more wear and tear onto our object. And now we're getting very, very strong kind of edges to our chipping. So, you know, it looks like the paint is kind of like cracked off and just kind of fallen off in very, very, uh, definitive sort of shapes. Uh, and then we also have this low value right here, which once again we can kind of use to define a little bit more where our black level, our zero, is falling. And in this particular case, uh, I could leave it all the way to the bottom and just kind of bring this guy up considerably. But uh, the more I do that, I notice that maybe I'm getting a little too much of this edge wear, so I want to control it a little bit better. And the way I'm doing it is just pushing this low value up just a hair, just to give us, I don't know, something that looks a little bit more natural, but of course, you know, season to taste as you like to see the model. All right, so I hope this technique is useful to some of you guys. As I said, the 3D Light developers are working on a proper curvature node for 3D Light, but in the meantime, this is a nice and easy workaround that you can use to achieve a similar type of effect. Thank you for watching and see you next time.